Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture and uh, I want to give you guys an update on our steam engine restoration project. And you can see behind me uh, the Frick steam engine that we had a little work day on back in April to get it cleaned up and to get it ready for painting. Uh, painting is still ongoing at this time. Uh, I'll fill you in a little bit of details there in a minute. But uh, anyway, I wanted to kind of give an update of the whole project because it has been a while and we have made a lot of project on this uh, over the last few weeks. So there is the Frick engine and uh, it is coming along. It is still being painted at the time. And if you look real closely, you can probably see we got multiple colors going on here. Not necessarily the red and the black on the wheels over here, but on the actual body itself. And a little bit of story there. Uh, we were trying to match this deep kind of a uh, purple color like you see right in here. Um, it's almost a burgundy color is what we were kind of going after. And that was matching an original Frick engine, or I guess it was actually a restored Frick engine, but that it had a, a matched paint uh, on it. And we went into the paint store and picked out what we thought was just the perfect color. And when we came out here and applied it to the engine, <laughs> it ended up being that purple right there. Uh, we pretty quickly after it had dried and we stood back and looked at it, it was just obnoxiously loud. Um, it was not the color we were going for at all. And it took us a while to track down this color here, which is the color that we were actually going for, more of a deep, darker, richer, it's still kind of a purple, uh, but more of a red really than a purple, a deep, dark red. Uh, and what we ended up doing was uh, a guy down near Thomasville, Georgia has a restored Frick um, traction engine. And uh, it was restored a few years ago. And we actually went down and was able to match that paint color that was on it, which uh, is a lot closer to the original color that this was going to be. So we are still in the process of getting this painted. We got a, a, a student that's helping us out on it that's been uh, working part time. Uh, coming out here and painting a couple of hours a week and it is slowly coming along. We did do the, the wheels in red. We just covered the, the pulley surfaces in black and th that was mainly just to keep the rust off of it. And on a real pulley that was in use, it's, it's not going to be painted, uh, but it will be a dark color because that's just the color of the cast iron. Uh, like I said, we've been through multiple colors here on this thing, but it is coming along. It is looking good. I think it's going to look really good once we get it painted up. Also been working on getting the wheels painted that's going to go onto the boiler. There's there's one of them. These are the two back wheels. I'll show you the boiler. We've actually got the front wheels on it already. Uh, but again, just been a lot of painting going on uh, on this project uh, and still got some painting to go. So here is a shot of the boiler itself that this uh, steam engine is going to mount up on. And this is the original boiler, the original Frick boiler to go with that original engine. This uh, engine was acquired from a uh, farm up, I believe it was up in, in uh, southeast Georgia. If I remember right, I don't remember the exact town, but back in the 1970s, there was a family that had this uh, steam engine and boiler and uh, they donated it to the museum and the museum was able to actually get it restored. And we used this setup for years to power our steam powered cotton gin. Uh, this boiler being an original riveted boiler, uh, it developed some boiler issues over the years uh, and basically the state condemned the boiler. We had to replace the boiler. Uh, and in the process, we actually downsized engines a little bit. The engine that we had is about 110 horsepower from what I've been told. And it was really a little bit large for our, um, our cotton gin. And we were able to acquire another freak engine that had a slightly smaller engine. I think it's about an 85 horsepower engine. And we ended up getting that, a new boiler built and that engine restored and put it up there. And this one here now is being restored to put on static display. It will not have steam put in it. Uh, the boiler uh, is not safe, at least from the standpoint of our insurance folks. So uh, it's not gonna be an option for us to get it back up and going, unfortunately. So when we got this boiler, uh, it, it was on the wheels 
and uh, I never saw it on the wheels, but uh, when, we, when we started this project, we realized that the, the wheels were over in the boneyard, uh, kind of the scrap area out here at the museum where a bunch of just, you know, different parts and pieces are. And we decided when we restored this, we wanted to get the wheels back on it again. Uh, so that's been kind of the process here. So we came in and we picked the boulder up. It was on a uh, temporary kind of trailer thing and uh, we picked it up and and basically got the the, uh, the the wheels or in the process of putting the wheels back on it. Now this front wheel, uh, according to the documentation that we've been able to find, it kind of had that, that wooden piece in the bottom. We had the, the, the wheels, we had this, uh, I think it's a two inch or three inch or maybe four inch, four inch square axle that ran up underneath it, but it had that wooden piece in there. That was all gone, so we had to recreate that. Uh, David King, who is our Director of Maintenance and Restoration out here at the museum, uh, crafted that out of uh, some, some, it's actually a piece of treated pine that we, we had sawed on our sawmill several years ago and had treated. Uh, so that's been put up back on there. And that is about as close to the original as what we've been able to come up with. We've still got some uh, work that's gotta be done to this. Uh, there's a tie rod that will run kind of from right down in here up to the engine and that just kind of gives us some stability to keep this front pedestal from coming apart. We've still got to put all that together. On the uh, back, we had the uh, the pieces down below there that the, the axle comes out. That bolts on to this piece of wood that is supported by these brackets. The brackets were still on the boiler and uh, we're in the process of getting all that put together and we will eventually get the wheels put on this thing where it can be become a basically a portable steam engine once again. Back in the day, the way this would have worked is uh, this was not a traction engine that you could power up and, and move it under its own steam, but instead you would just hitch up some horses or mules to this thing and you would move it around. And that was pretty common. Uh, portable sawmills and other places where you need portable power, uh, you would just Again, you just hook up some horses, a team of horses, and move this rig around to wherever it needed to be. Uh, but this is coming along as well. You can see up top here, there are two pads, kind of right here and over here. That's where the steam engine will sit. It will all pipe back into the steam pipes there, and there's an exhaust pipe that'll go up into that hole on the smokestack and shoot the exhaust up the smokestack. So coming along very nicely. Speaking of the exhaust pipe, that's the exhaust pipe right there. You can see this uh, little manifold here that bolts up to the steam engine right here. That pipe there will be painted that same kind of a uh, dark burgundy purple color uh, before it goes back onto the engine. Well, there you go, guys. That's just a really quick update video uh, for this Monday, but I've had several people asking about this and I did want to just kind of follow up. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get this thing all wrapped up and finished up here in the next, I don't know, month or so. And we've actually got a a uh, little shelter erected out at the front of the museum, kind of out by the front parking lot, the country store, the visitor center where people come in, where it'll be put on permanent display and people can come in and look at it and enjoy this for many years to come. Uh, it is a rather large Frick stationary engine. I'm told it was the last uh, boiler, at least, that, that Frick made. Um, I've seen that documented several times. I've had some other freak experts uh, say that's not accurate. I'm not sure if it is or not, but uh, we have been told that in the past. So uh, I'd be interested if there's any freak historians out there. I'd, I'd like to uh, get into the records and see if we can confirm that or not. But there you go. Uh, like I said, just a quick update of the steam engine restoration project, cosmetic restoration project uh, coming along nicely. And again, I want to thank the many guys, uh, we had a fundraising effort several months ago uh, to raise money for this project and many, many, many of you guys out there contributed to make this possible and uh, greatly, greatly appreciated.